better time than right now. So thankful for another wonderful opportunity for us to be here this day, for us to be able to come together and learn the wonderful truths of what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for us and made available for us in his son, uh, in, in uh, his death, his burial, and his resurrection at the cross. We are thankful for that and we bless God for that. And again, our heart's goal here is to, again, take the promises that God has provided for us in sending Jesus to die and be buried and be raised from the dead so that, again, that same promise that we have received, we can go and proclaim it to others. We can present the same promises that they may receive those promises and walk in and be blessed just as we are blessed. That's our heart's goal here. And so we always talk about, again, the fact that if we're going to talk about the promises of God, we have to talk about how they're received, how they're walked in. And we have been on, as of late, this series on faith. We have touched on so many different aspects of faith, and I believe that there's still much more to even talk about when it comes to faith. But where we are now is we've been talking about these particular works that are in relation to faith, that are related to faith. And we said that there are three types of works that the Bible speak of. And uh, these three types of work are number one, it is the works that are in opposition to faith. There are actually some works that are in opposition to faith. And we've talked about the fact that through faith, God says all of my promises are provided to you through faith in what my son has done. Well, when a person does some type of work in order to earn or try to deserve what God says, I give freely, uh, again, by grace to those who trust in my son. If I try to work for that thing, that work then is in opposition to faith. That is something I'm trying to do in order to acquire what God says you only acquire through faith in my son, just like righteousness. You only are declared right with me through faith in my son. But if you try to do a work in order to gain right standing with me, then you're in, in that case operating in opposition to faith. And so we've gone over that one thoroughly. And at the same time, we've talked about these number two works that are corresponding actions or responses that reflect our faith or reflect what it is that we believe. And again, these are, again, we've talked about, these are works or simply responses uh, that reflect what it is that we believe. Again, that, that, um, that show the fact that, yes, we believe some particular things concerning Jesus Christ. These aren't things that are done to earn, again, what God has provided. But again, these are things that reflect what we believe. And we talked about before, they actually position us for what it is that God has provided as we walk by faith, trusting in what he says. There's going to be a, that walk of faith is a corresponding action that reflects what it is that we believe. And then where we are now is number three, where we talk, we're talking about these works that are a byproduct of God's power and grace working in us when we live by faith. Again, and we, we've been talking about that there are some good works that God says, I have set up for you to walk in. Again, where these good works are going to come to pass by God's power and by God's grace in our lives. Again, as we walk by faith, as we walk by faith, God's power and his grace is going to work in us. And so if we're going to talk about these particular works, these good works that God says, I've set up for you beforehand to walk in, we have to also at the same time talk about where do our emotions, our feelings come in to play in all of this? Again, because if we're honest, we're honest in this world, um, a lot of what is done, and really according to the Bible, all uh, um, uh, that mankind does is a byproduct of his feelings, emotions, desires, whatever it is. Again, what mankind does, and, and again, I don't want to start off gory, but I just uh, uh, looked up a story 
the other day where this dude killed this baby mama. Five months pregnant. You, you see, that action was out from some kind of feeling, desire working in him, emotion there that was working in him that led him to do that. And a lot of times we, we can see it when it comes to those big things, those big horrible things. We can sit there and look at that and say, yeah, that guy, you know, some kind of anger, that's an emotion working in him, bitterness, emotion working in him that led to that action. We can see that in regard to those big things, but we don't see it in regard to a lot of these little things that again, that people operate in that actually go against what God's good works that he's prepared beforehand to, uh, to manifest that these again, feelings again are in relation to these things, are, in, are related to again, people's behaviors, that their feelings, emotions, desires are related to their behaviors. And so we looked in the Bible and we saw, because the first thing we talked about was the fact that you won't find the words feelings, emotions uh, in the Bible. Well, we use feelings and emotions, but we did connect the fact that, again, the Bible uses the word desires and those desires relate to what we would call feelings and emotions. They do the same thing. Those desires affect people's responses and behaviors. And so we looked in the Bible and we saw that, again, the word desire and lust is all is oftentimes used in the same way that we would use feelings and emotions. And so we looked and we saw in the Bible that there are two types of feelings, of desires, and emotions. There are the ungodly kind and the godly kind. Again, and just like we mentioned in the very first portion of this series is that, again, emotions, feelings, desires aren't wrong, aren't bad. The, again, uh, again, it's just a matter of whether they are ungodly or godly. And we find out whether or not they're godly or ungodly from where they are rooted in, where they start. And so we looked at a couple examples of ungodly desires, ungodly feelings, ungodly emotions. And again, we looked at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, where it says this. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive of captives of gullible women loaded down with sins. Look what it says these women are. And these individuals are as well. These men are. They are led away by various lusts. Led away. Meaning, again, these desires, these feelings, these emotions lead a person in a direction. These desires, these lusts, these feelings, these emotions. And he says, particularly here, these lead these, these take these lead these gullible women he's talking about in the church some of these women who again fall for these false doctrine preaching men and end up operating foolishly again he said that they were led by their emotions led by their feelings led by their ungodly desire and so again he says and they were led away led astray led away from operating in the truth that's an ungodly emotion, ungodly feeling. And Titus chapter 3, verse 3, it says this, it says, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, look what he says, serving various lusts mm -hmm. and pleasures, and as a result of that, we're living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Again, he says here that these lusts were being served by us. We were in slavery to them, and as a result of that, we were hateful and hating one another, living in malice, envious of others, looking at other folks and what they got, and mad at them for what they have. He says again that that, that was a byproduct of serving some desire, some feeling, some emotion on the inside of us, this ungodly feeling emotion. Again, in 1 Peter chapter 2, Verse 11, it says, Beloved, I, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, he says, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Again, this word lust, again, is the same Greek word as desire. This desire is at war against your soul. Again, so again, this is an ungodly 
lust. Meaning it's trying to lead your soul in a way that God isn't wanting it to go. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's a feeling, an emotion, a desire. And then in Jude chapter 1 verse 18, it says, How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would, look what he says, who walk according to their own ungodly lust. Again, they walk, these individuals, again, he says here, they are mockers uh, in the last time. And they are, these are individuals who are against the gospel. And what they're doing is they're walking or their lives are governed by, again, these own ungodly lust, ungodly feelings, ungodly emotions that's working on the inside of them, leading them in a way that causes them to be a mocker of the gospel, a mocker of Jesus Christ, a mocker. See, so again, these individuals who, who want to proclaim to be, again, uh, uh, so anti-Christianity and anti-gospel, hear me, they're being led by some emotion, some feeling, some desire working on the inside of them. But it's an ungodly one. It's an ungodly one. So we've seen the ungodly ones, but there are also godly desires. That can work inside of an individual as well. And we looked at Luke chapter 22, verse 15, where it says, Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This is Jesus here who has this fervent desire, this great feeling on the inside, this great emotion of him wanting to eat this Passover meal with his disciples. This is him having such a strong, he says, a fervent desire working in him to be able to partake in this Passover meal. He greatly wanted that to take place. That's a godly desire that he has here in order for him to, again, wanting uh, uh, that to take place. That's not an ungodly one. It's a godly one. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17, it says, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, uh, endeavored more eagerly, look what he says, to see your face with great desire. Again, this is uh, Paul speaking to these individuals who says that we've been separated mm -hmm. for a time. Again, but we endeavored more eagerly out of this desire that was there, this great desire, again, to see you guys and to be in your presence because of this great desire. He said, we endeavored more eagerly. Again, we fought more eagerly to get back to you guys. That was out of this great desire, this feeling. This emotion on the inside of them, something on the inside of them, again, that was driving them, uh, again, to get back to these Thessalon uh, this, the, the individuals in Thessalonica, again, and see them again. Again, this is a godly desire. Again, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, this is the faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. Again, this desire is a godly desire. It is a desire to be an overseer in the church, to aid in the building up and the development of a, of, of a, uh, of a church. Not everybody has that desire, not only specifically that desire, but it's greater than just being a bishop. It's the desire to see the edification of the body of Christ. Not everyone has that desire, but this is a godly desire that he says here uh, that a person has in wanting to be an overseer and aid in the development and the growth and the evangelism uh, uh, of the uh, uh, local church and, and wanting to see that come to pass. Again, that's a feeling a person has. That's something on the inside of them that's driving them to be and do that. A drive, that's another word I want to start adding to this. A drive on the inside of individuals that pushes them in that direction and causes them to operate that way again. And then Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, it says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints, and do minister. He says, and we desire, again, there's a drive in us uh, in, to 
again, and this is more than just I want something to happen, but there's a drive there to see you guys, again, as he says here, that each one of you show this same diligence. Again, this is part of the reason of writing this letter to them is so that they can have this diligence to continue to go forward. Well, this writer is saying that as a desire there working on the inside of me, a drive that, that wants to see that come to pass for you guys, that he says that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. This is what that writer wanted for those individuals and the purpose for which he wrote Hebrews. He did that out of this great desire to see them again to, uh, uh, to show this same diligence of operating in the work and labor of the Lord. He wanted to see all of them. Yes, some of them were, but he wanted to see all of them. And this drive on the inside of him led to him writing this letter. So that they could, again, be corrected and get on, again, where they are having that same diligence and are operating in, in the work and the labor of the love. And so my point with just showing all of these is just to show that, again, desire isn't negative, wrong, or bad. A lot of times in this world, it's presented as if, honestly, women are just more emotion, emotional versus men. And that, that's not the truth. A lot of people don't realize that. All have desire. All have feelings. All have emotions. It's just, again, what needs to be understood is if it's godly or ungodly. And that is determined by the view and the understanding a person has working on the inside of them. There's a connection, and we talked about this last week, between what view or understanding or how a person sees, there's a connection between that and what they feel on the inside, their feelings, their emotions, and their desires. That's what determines, again, which one it is. If it's godly or if it's ungodly, it is how a person sees their understanding, their outlook, their perspective of people, themselves, God, all of that determines which desire, which feelings, which emotions are working on the inside of me. That's what determines that. And so we talked last week about the three types of views or understandings a person can have. There are three types that a person can have. One is called ignorance. A person can have a view that the Bible labels as ignorance, an ignorant view, a, 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 an ignorant understanding or an understanding that is called ignorance by God. Another one is the knowledge of sin. A person can have a view or understanding working in them called the knowledge of sin. Also, a person can have the knowledge of God slash knowledge of Jesus Christ. They can have that view, that understanding working on the inside of them. And which one is working at a person at any individual time determines what desires are going to start to form on the inside of them. Whichever one it is that I have as a view, as an understanding, as an outlook, again, determines which desires I have working on the inside of me. Again, whether it's ungodly or godly, it's determined by whether or not I have ignorance, the knowledge of sin, or the knowledge of God slash Jesus Christ working on the inside of me. And so when we talked about ignorance last week, we said this, that we said that ignorance is formed in us when we allow the thinking and understanding of this world, which is all rooted in self, to be the thinking that we receive in us as truth. I said we will walk ignorantly when we do this and subject ourselves to the lust of the flesh, which are the ungodly feelings, emotions, and desires uh, to be formed in us and determine our conduct. Again, what the, he, this ignorance, again, 
is what is developed in me when I allow the thinking and understanding of this world, how this world sees. Again, the primary emphasis and focus of this world is me, me, me. People want to trust in themselves. They want to believe in themselves. They have views and understandings that are all shaped in the confidence and self. If you listen to these motivational speakers out there, it's all about lifting self. It's all about saying self is great. And you just got to believe self is great. And the sad thing about it is the church has taken over that same line of thinking and they just say the same thing that the motivational speakers are saying, which is all rooted in self, and just put a little sprinkle of, of Jesus or a label of Jesus on top of it. That's what a lot of the church is doing. Again, it is a confidence in self that these, again, these, what the Bible calls the basic principles of the world, the, the you, let me give you this scheme and this different thing to make you better. And as people receive that as truth in their heart, their view and understanding is going to be called ignorance. And that ignorance working in them is going to cause them to subject themselves to the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. These feelings and emotions that are ungodly are going to start to work in them and going to direct their lives. It's going to affect what their behavior is. Again, it all starts with that person allowing something in their heart that is ungod or excuse me, un gospel or not gospel that is not of Christ that is not uh, 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 concerning what Jesus Christ has done. They're gonna allow, as they allow that to work in their hearts, their view and their understanding, their outlook, how they see, again, is going to be called ignorance. And that ignorance is going to cause ungodly feelings, emotions, and desires to work in them and determine their coming. You got something? Yeah, uh, exactly. It's the, you know, um, like, uh, like you said, there's feelings, even with that faith, could be good. Mm -hmm. Just put it in its proper perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as we see the world, especially nowadays, what have you? If we lead, if we are led by the Spirit of God mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. and we see events happening around us that mm -hmm. is ungodly, mm -hmm. there's a result. Mm -hmm. It doesn't only impact the person who's doing it mm -hmm. or the people that's doing it, it, it impacts others. Yeah. And yeah. such as children. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where children with faith, with I mean, feelings of faith in children comes in or what not, you know. I don't want to be insensitive or what mm -hmm, have you, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it got to a point now that even those who call themselves of Christ my, my. or what not, see the trouble of the world and how it's impacting children, mm. that you know, um, the cries go out for the children mm -hmm. and, 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 and thinking that, well, you know, if we remove guns, we remove the violence mm -hmm. over children. No, that's not, mm -hmm. not it. It's still the heart. Oh, it is. Come or on. What have you. And and what it should do to those who call themselves of faith, what I believe God will um, make them speak loudly mm -hmm. concerning receiving the good news or changing their heart. Mm -hmm. They'll most likely get salvation from so this way their heart could be changed. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you got tools mm -hmm. and you got a bigger heart, you're going to kill. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a gun or heart or what have you. So the thing is, is it is putting it in the right perspective, feelings, because you get feelings being mm -hmm. in faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or what have you. But at the same time, uh uh uh, uh those feelings could be worldly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or what have and, you. And, and see, and, and and this is the thing, just going back to that example I used of the guy. Again, I want to be careful with this, but the guy ended up killing his yeah. his, his girlfriend. Who, who mm -hmm. they were off and on, but she was like pregnant. And, I, and again, I'm sure that there was some emotion there because of something that took place there. But again, that happens to people all the time. But they break up, things happen, folks cheat, things like that. What would lead a person to go as far as to kill that person? Something is going on in your thinking. 
that is affecting your emotions that strong yeah. that leads yeah. you to do something like that. Yeah. And 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 my my point is that is that I, and this is what I want to just make sure I'm showing the connection of that I, I hope people don't think that just your emotions is just happenstance. It's just hey, sometimes I feel like something, but sometimes I don't. No. Your feelings are connected to how you see. How you see determines and affects how these emotions or what emotions are built up in you. Again, just like again, just like that example of, of that. Another person can respond in a particular way that has a view of God that if something goes on in a relationship where, again, they don't go to kill somebody. Would they have anger there? That's an emotion. Yes. Would they have, again, hurt or whatever it is? Yes. But again, it's anger isn't that emotion of anger isn't ungodly. It's again, it's just determined where is that leading you? Is it leading you to again go and kill your baby mama like that? It like he did again. That that certain views again that will affect people's desire and cause them to respond in a particular way that is not of God. That, so my point is that that there's nothing wrong, like you said, with feelings and emotions. But again, how a person responds by that is determined, whether it's ungodly or godly, is determined by how they see. And that's really, really important. It's determined by how they see. No one's emotions are just happenstance. It's not, hey, I feel this way. I can't help the way I I can't help that I feel this way. No, I may not know how to help the way I feel this way, but it can be helped. Because it can be determined by how I see. And that's why if any time if I feel a particular way that's leading me in a particular direction, what I always go back to is, Jason, how you seeing this? God, help me to see properly. Because I understand that this desire is leading me in a particular way. Whether I lose the battle in that moment or not. If I lose the battle in that moment and I'm seeing incorrectly and this desire leads me in a particular direction, I can always at least go back and say, okay, Lord, I understand that I'm seeing something differently, something wrong. Help me to see properly versus, hey, that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to show with this Faith and Feeling series to show that there is a connection between Again, what you believe, which ultimately determines how you see, which ultimately determines what you feel. You, you got something? Yeah, um, and I would think if somebody was speaking that, you know, like you said, it shouldn't be that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Or what have you, mm -hmm. even if a Christian, you know, far as, you know, it's not about the end of the days mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, um, especially for a particular individual, at, and I talk about Christians, like I've lost a niece, I mean a nephew, through mm -hmm. gang violence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as far as I know that the neighborhood they're in, or what have you, is hard. Um, he been brought up so well, that's all he knows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, even if he heard the gospel, the gospel wasn't heard for somebody to continue to be with him. Mm -hmm where he got lost in the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and that's the way it should be because if we call ourselves Christians, Christ-like, or what have you, you know, um, and if God is operating in us, you know, well, we got to, well, 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 if that individual is so important to us, his salvation mm -hmm. or their salvation is so important to us that you know, even impossible, make the way that they get, get saved. Because the thing that gets me, Christ did it for me. Mm -hmm. what have you. you know, he went out his way, and I take it personally. He went out his way to, hey, basically save the world in me, and, and you know, thank God I received. But, but, but it's the same thing with the child. They want that attention, mm -hmm. be it for the parent. But if the neighborhood, could give them more love and what have you than what they get from home. Mm -hmm. They want to go to a place where they get that, you know, a uh, 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 comfort from, mm -hmm. and they gonna more or less go with that. That's the first thing they gonna 
we see. But when they see, I believe in a, a youngster see a, a youngster, youngster see that they with that much that somebody mm -hmm. taking the time out to mm -hmm. give me some attention mm -hmm. or what have you. You know, you can more or less win them over for Christ. See, and I just want to use what you just said. Everything you just expressed is a view that you have. Yeah. And yeah. that view is going to stir up some desire in you right. that motivates you to do something in mm -hmm. relation to how you see. You see an individual that says, yeah. you know what, if that person, again, uh, uh, could just know the same love that I've known, exactly. that, that he did this for me, mm -hmm. again, man, it's like I see that person that's needing to know this love. Right. What is that going to do? It's going to stir up some desire and motivate you right. to do something. Right. And that's what I'm right. trying to connect. That view and that understanding that a person has would determine what is on the inside. Because some people can be uh, just, they could care less about that. Exactly. You know, uh, they, I mean, and they don't, because of that, they don't have that motivating factor mm -hmm. that leads them to ultimately do something mm -hmm. about, to respond that way. And what I'm saying is that that view that you have is shaped by the truth of the gospel that's been placed in right. your heart right. of what Christ right. did for you. Mm -hmm. And because right. that truth was placed in your heart, again, right. Right. now you have this particular view of what he's done for me. I wish other people would know about what he's done for me. That now motivates you to go and do something. That's what I'm trying to show the connection of the dots. While you have other people out there who are constantly having this, like what's going on right now, big time is this, well, everybody just saved. Okay, well, you know, that, that's that's the, the big thing that's going on right now with Carlton Pearson and this Come yeah, Sunday right. thing again. So, so what does that do for a lot of people? It doesn't motivate right. them to right. say, my goodness, this person right. needs to know and come to salvation. Oh, well, they already saved. Okay, well, let me just go on to bed. Exactly. Well, well, why are they doing that? Because how they see. Right. And that's what I'm saying. There's a connection with how a person sees and what desire works on the inside of them. And that desire then determines what a person does. And so we talked about the first one being ignorance. We also talked about one of the views being the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. And we found that over in Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 7 where it says, uh, and we wrote here, it's that the knowledge of sin is formed in us when we allow the law slash commandments to be placed in our hearts as the reality and truth that we live by. Again, when people take the thou shalt not, the Old Testament individuals or individuals right now who are in Christ or outside of Christ who attempt to take thou shalt not and live for God on the basis of that truth. It is true. The law is true. Again, they take that. But what it does is, and this is what we, we said, uh, what I wrote down is that when we live our lives with the knowledge of sin, we give opportunity for the sin that dwells in us to form ungodly desires, emotions, feelings, and lust in us, which will then dictate our conduct. That's what we wrote. Uh, that's what we saw over in Romans chapter 7 when Paul continued to say, uh, uh, I will to do good. And if I will to do good, it, uh, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin that dwells in me. Well, he said that the reason why that happened was because he took the thou shalt not of the law and placed it in his heart. And what that law did working in his heart, it shaped his view and his understanding which is called the knowledge of sin. And then that triggered these desires, ungodly desires uh -huh. to work in them that caused him to do what he didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And that was God's purpose in sending the law so that that would happen. And as we said, that man would come to the end of himself. That was the whole purpose. And so this knowledge of sin, God wanted mankind to have that to lead them to salvation. But then after salvation, he said, I don't want you to see that way. Right. So I want to renew your mind now in what I call knowledge or what he calls the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I said that the knowledge of God slash Christ is formed in us when we live by faith in Jesus and allow the truth of who he came to be for us 
which is revelation, and the purpose of God fulfill, God fulfilling all things in Christ, that purpose is called wisdom, mm -hmm. to be poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. When I trust in Christ and then wisdom and revelation is being poured into that heart, it shapes my thinking now into what is called knowledge into the knowledge of God is where we begin to see the way God sees. Just like you used the example earlier where you talked about how you saw um, how he, how Jesus loved you so much mm -hmm. and, and how he did this for you and how, man, if these individuals could experience it, that's how God sees. God says, I sent my son to provide all of this and that and I want people to see this and understand and come to this revelation come to the knowledge that's why it says god desire uh that all we god wills that all men come to salvation and the knowledge of the truth mm -hmm. he wants people to have this knowledge well once a person has this knowledge just like again you use the example of for yourself i said when we live lives with the knowledge of god slash christ in us god's desires feelings emotions just like with you having that desire again to now allow people to see that same love that you've seen for yourself that that's a desire working on the inside of you that's a drive on the inside of you because of how you see mm -hmm. again and that that seeing is knowledge well that desire working in you that emotion that feeling that drive is called life life God's life working on the inside of you. And so I said again, that when we live lives with the knowledge of God slash Christ in us, God's desires, feelings, emotions called life and power work in us and dictate our conduct. See, it affected your conduct because you had that drive mm -hmm. on the inside of you to now. You see that connection? It affects how you respond. You get what you got something? It, 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 exactly, because what well, it is more or less uh, oh, uh, 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 when you're helping somebody mm -hmm. through the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it's God that's going to put in the yes. you. Yes. Not. You know, because it, 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 uh, uh, even though when I got saved or what have you, that, 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 that I was afraid to go to church by myself. Mm -hmm. But there was somebody there. Mm -hmm. The Lord had somebody there. But at the same time, it's the Lord doing. He knows the heart yes. and He knows what you can take. You yeah. have to do it by yourself or with somebody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. When I, if mm -hmm. He knows you have a sincere heart, yes. He's going to work with you. Exactly. And that's the whole thing. And, and, and that's what we're going to go in a second to look at Him working uh, uh, with you. Is him slowly but surely yeah. developing you right. with wisdom and revelation That's as you right. trusted in Christ so that you start to now have this renewed yeah. way of thinking. Like that person that was there to help you as. Now they're helping you and exactly. now you're coming and starting to understand more, starting to see more and now having this motivation yes. on the inside of you. This drive, yes. this desire, this feeling working in you that's leading you now to operate a particular way. That's right. Again, to operate, and it, again, that's that life working on the inside of you. Right. Now, dictating your conduct, affecting, again, how you respond, how you operate, again, with individuals. And it all stems from, again, what is being allowed in here. Yeah. To be exactly. placed in here, in the heart, that will shape the thinking, shape my understanding, right. shape my outlook. And so again, this knowledge of God slash Jesus Christ, again, is so extremely important in order for us to get to the point of what we've been talking about as of late, which is what? The good works. Mm -hmm. The good works. Because again, what have we been talking about? How are we going to get to the good works that God has prepared beforehand? Well, what I want to go through over the next couple of of things is I want to talk about the pathway that we just really showed but I just I just wrote it down so that we can kind of see the pathway of how we go from the place of faith in Christ uh -huh. to the good works uh -huh. and how we show how these feelings and emotions right. and desires are part of it that right. drive is part of it 
that working on the inside of us by God's power and by his life and grace is again a part of what causes the good works to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so this is again the first thing. This is just a reiteration of what we've already pretty much said. We said the number one thing that happens is what? Faith develops into knowledge as wisdom and revelation is poured into a heart that trusts in Christ. Mm -hmm. See, as again, a heart trusts in Christ, trust in what Jesus Christ has done. Now that that heart trusts in Christ and it has revelation of who Christ is, which we don't know all of that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But again, as more revelation of who Christ is, is poured into our hearts and more wisdom is poured into our hearts. Again, it develops into knowledge. It starts us and causes us to start to see. Again, just like the example you used earlier, that was you, you expressed a different way in which you saw things and how you see things versus a lot of how the world sees, you know? And so where well, that stemmed from your faith in Christ, your trust in Christ, and again, as that trust in Christ was then, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it was watered by wisdom and revelation. As that took place, knowledge started to develop. This is again how we get to that place of that knowledge. Again, as wisdom, as revelation is, is starting to form in that heart, uh, that trust in Christ, then knowledge starts to develop. Mm -hmm. Knowledge starts to come forth. And we looked at over here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. And we saw that where it says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Mm -hmm. So again, as I always like to reiterate, he's clearly talking to people who have trusted in Christ. Right. But look at what he said, though. He says, I don't cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, look what he says, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, look what he says, in the knowledge of him. And so again, we've talked about this constantly, but that wisdom and revelation, he's saying that for you who have trusted in Christ, I'm praying that you receive a spirit now where oh, wisdom and revelation can flow and it will be in the knowledge of him. Meaning it will, as it says in, in verse 18, it will cause the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened and you come to the place where you know or have the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so again, that first thing is what? Faith. In Christ, that is watered with wisdom and revelation of who Christ is, that starts now to develop into knowledge. Again, that's what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 shows us that. And then look over here in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Look what it says here. He says, and he himself gave some, speaking of Jesus, gave some to be apostles, prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Look what he says he gave uh, them some for. He says, for the equipping of the saints. So the saints can be equipped. Look, what are they equipped for? For the work of the ministry. Remember, what are we talking about? We're talking about how to go from the faith to the good works that God has prepared. Well, look at what he said he did in order for people to uh, operate in the works of the ministry. He gave some uh, uh, and he's talking about gifts. He gave gifts to, to individuals so that they can equip the saints. Mm. They can mm. equip the saints. And so the, the saints being equipped with something is what causes them to operate in the work of the ministry, to do the good okay. works that God has prepared. Now look what he goes on to say. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Look what he said. That's he saying. That's what he gave gifts to these men for, uh, so that they can equip the saints, so that the saints could be edified, or the whole body of Christ could be edified. Look what he says. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and what the knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he says he sent men. Gave them gifts so that through those gifts, they can equip people, equip the saints 
and through the saints being equipped, they'll come to the knowledge of the Son of God. So you have to think about it. And this is something we're going to talk about when we talk about ministry and gifts and, and, and all that stuff. But what do you think these pastors, teachers, evangelists are, are doing for these individuals that's causing them to come to the knowledge of the Son of God? Those that believe, they got to be giving them wisdom and revelation. They got to be revealing to them who Christ is. This is what church is. And imparting wisdom so that people's minds can start to be renewed. As they are renewed, they are equipped and they can be, they can operate in the work of the ministry. We're going to talk about that when we really get into talking about ministry and talking about gifts and all of that. But my point with this is just to show that again, going back here, and I'm going to come right to you, Brother Roger, that that faith, again, just like a person who initially gets saved, they trust in Christ. But what has to happen? They need to learn who Christ is. They don't know everything. Mm. That's revelation. They have to have revealed to their heart who Christ is. Again, what does a, a, a pastor, a teacher, a, a person supposed to do? Impart or, or, or speak to them the revelation of God, the revelation of who Christ is. They speak to them that as they do that, the Holy Spirit can take it and work it in that heart. What else are they supposed to do? I wish I had used the scripture. They speak wisdom. Paul said that uh, we speak wisdom to those that are mature. And he said, we speak, uh, 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 he said, I, 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 I preach and teach with all wisdom so that we all can be built up. I know I'm not using that scripture or saying it the way it's written. It's in Colossians chapter one somewhere. But again, the purpose is, and what I'm saying is that that wisdom and that revelation being poured into a heart that believes is what renews that mind and knowledge, causes that person to see differently. And he says here, going back over here, is that that is them being equipped. That's the saints being equipped for the work of the ministry. Them being equipped with wisdom and revelation and knowledge. Again, that working in them and them coming to the place of knowledge. That, that's the whole thing. Did you have something else you want yeah, to say? Yeah, um, so that basically what Paul is doing is getting the church in order. Huh. Get, get, getting in the church where they could go mm -hmm. and minister. Yes. Exactly. Or, 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 or what have you. Because, you know, if the church ain't got itself right. My goodness. How can we go out there? And, I mean, this, really? This, this, this is what does say the Lord. Exactly. Or what have you. Man, you know, the body ain't even sure why they ain't together for. My goodness, and, and and this is the thing, no one knows that initially. Exactly. When you first get saved, you don't know any of that. So that's the purpose of them being built up again with wisdom and revelation and knowledge. So that now as they are built up with that, what can they do? They can go out and regurgitate that same thing. What are they operating in at that point? The work of the ministry. That's all it is. All we're doing is just regurgitating the truth of God, the truth of his knowledge, the truth of his wisdom, the truth of the revelation of who Christ is, the gospel message. That's all we're doing. What well, I have to, again, be developed in that truth first before I really go out and operate properly. And in, in truth, and in, in me, again, proclaiming and talking to people and ministering uh, to people. Again, other than, again, absolutely, just tell the gospel. But again, there are going to be so many questions that come along with that, that I need to understand, have an understanding and a proper view in order to do that. You, you got right, something? Because in that, um, it shows a oneness mm -hmm, when it comes mm -hmm. to the things of God. Nobody had their own individual. Oh, view. see you, see you, see you going somewhere now. Because in this work, in the, with the church, the whole bunch of folk got different views. Everybody got religion. Everybody got their different views. Each religion got their different views. My goodness. The way of God. Man, each church. Yeah, a whole bunch of churches. Not even outside of Christianity. Come on, Christianity. You go to one church, you get something totally different than something else. So, my goodness. And I, but but again, it's. It's again, it's because people have not been developed in the knowledge of the Son of God. They don't That's see right. as God sees. Again, and I almost like to use it as this is, and it, it, this is an example. Now, I'm, 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 yeah, uh, this is an example. If you understand, again, if y'all remember in human anatomy, when we took that back in what, ninth grade or something like that, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and one of the, they talked about the, the, 
what was it, five systems that work in the body? What is it? Uh, help me out, babe. Muscular, Mu- skeletal. Mu- muscular, skeletal, the nervous system. Yes. And uh, what's the a circular system? That's the blood. And there's another one. But but the one I, I want to talk about is, think about the nervous system. You yeah, remember how the nervous system worked? It was like you had connected to the brain these, this nervous system that ran down to each individual member. Do you know what it did? It carried yes. the view and understanding. I hope y'all hear me. The view and understanding of the head to this individual member. As the view and understanding of the head got into this member, this member responds in relation to this. It does the work, oh my, that it's called to do once it allows the view and understanding of the brain to work in it. If there's a disconnect, what does this do? Sit limp and does nothing. It sits limp. So that view and understanding is important that that is allowed to work in it. Well, what are we, y'all? The body of Christ. Who's the head? Jesus. Jesus. As we allow his view and his understanding to work in us, what will happen with us? We will respond the way he's called us to respond and, and, and move in what we are called to. And then this is just another thing, and I'm, I'm trying to so we can move on. But if but you mentioned another one of those systems, the muscular system. Well, what does that do? That's the power. The power to be able to do. Well, what does that nervous system connect to? The nervous system triggers there, and it's connected to the muscles in here. And it, it triggers this muscle to then move, and that causes it to respond the way that it's supposed to respond. Causes this body part. Well, again, the same way it's with, it is with a, go ahead, baby, you got something. Is that when the body responds to what the, the brain does, there's no second thought, mm. there's no mm. other outside mm. influence. It, it just does my, what the my, brain my, tells my. it to do. My goodness. And then, the, you know, you're talking about the muscular system, that power, that's that power and grace oh, that you've been talking about. <laughs> you got it. You know, compelling you to do it. Oh, Jesus. It's no second thought. My just God. Do it. My God, my God, that's exactly uh, what I am talking about. That is exactly what it, I am talking about. And it, again, as that understanding that was in here is working in here, that's right. it automatically responds. It's the same way with us. Right. As again, how Christ sees, how God sees is now developed in us. And we begin to mm-hmm. see, as he sees, just like the example of right. that we use with you, Brother Reg, again, what was that? It'll be a response automatically. Uh-huh. And, and again, do I have to speak to this hand and tell this hand, you need to move this way? And uh-huh. you need, do I have to do that? No. Automatically, the understanding that's in here is working in here. I don't have to tell it anything. It's just like it sees how I see all oh, Jesus. It sees the way I see. And because of that, it responds. It has a, it's motivated, all oh, hear me, to move. It has desire working in it that is in here to move in what I want it to do. Y'all get that? Oh, my. And it has the power, too. Go ahead. <laughs> And that's what crisis oh, caused the whole world. Man, man, you know what happened? man. He, you, you know, uh, 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 by you say, I am the way. My, my. The truth and the light. There's no other way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, a Christian on the other side of the world, you're, my you're God. Have, you're come on, now. come on. Come on now. The Holy Spirit. Oh, come on and now. In the way of ministry. Yes, it may sir. not be word for bed. Not in yeah. line. Oh my, that's it's exactly. It. And and see, and just oh man. See, yeah, this is what this is what we're gonna talk about when we get into the ministry yeah. part and talking about again the whole gifts and all that stuff. But again, if you think about it, when my hand Oh, let me say it this way, the brain has the same exact view, exactly. right? That's and right. it sends it down to the hand. Well, the hand may respond differently than how the foot responds, but again, both of them are working together because they have the same view. And my point with that is when you use the example of people may minister different and operate differently, but they're, again, they're, if they're ministering for the same purpose and goal, they're ministering out of that same understanding 
again, even though they may do it differently. Uh, exactly. Again, that's that's part of again the different gifts that people have. It's, 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 right. Exactly, that's right. First Corinthians, right. I think, thirteen exactly. or fourteen. And uh, again, different parts of the body function differently. Uh -huh. Even the internal uh -huh. ones, it talks about again. Again, he said the things that are secret that you can't see, but they are just as that's important right. or more. Exactly. The stuff on the inside, you let something go wrong exactly. on the inside. Of you can cut one of these fingers off, but you let something on the inside go wrong exactly. that no one sees, no one talks about, no one gives praise to. Yeah. But it's extremely important. Uh -huh. Oh my! See y'all, we're we gonna we're gonna get to that series at some yeah. point. But my main point, though, is that again, faith in Christ, when its wisdom and revelation starting to work in it. It is brought to the place of that knowledge where that member sees as the head sees. Exactly. And again, and as that happens, they can operate. They are equipped to work, work uh, to, to um, uh, they, they're equipped for the work of the ministry. They're equipped exactly. to do the good works that God has prepared That's beforehand. Right. Again, and so that faith leading to knowledge is extremely important and so we talked about the faith developing and knowledge as wisdom and revelation is poured into a heart and number two we said that then god's life his desire his emotion his feelings are formed in us as we begin to see as he sees or have his knowledge his desire his emotion his feelings working in us and again, if we look over here, and I, I, I left it out on that one, but it should also include power as well. Yes. And, and we're going we, to add it on the other ones. I didn't add it on this one. I forgot to. Mm -hmm. But look what it says over here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. And you just said this, babe. Again, in the knowledge mm -hmm. of God. See, mm -hmm. grace and, and hear me, this member it independent of itself can do nothing you cut this hand off it's just gonna sit there over there but again so by grace i'm giving this body is or this head or, or the life working in it is functioning on the inside of this enabling it to do what it is that it is doing it's all by grace it's, it's this hand isn't earning it it's not deserving its ability to do what it is doing it is simply a, allow the as the oh i'm trying to say it as the understanding that is working in jason's head works in his hand also the grace and the power that goes along with it is working in it at the same time and this deserves this hand deserves none of that and i'm saying that it's the same he's saying here that's the same thing for us Grace and peace is going to be multiplied to us mm. in or by the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And look at what he says. He defines what that grace is. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue and so he shows here that as a result of this knowledge god's power his divine power has given to us that's just like and i hope y'all see the connection that's just like this divine power these muscles in here they always in here they, they in there at all times even if you cut this off they, that power's in there uh -huh. right. but again it's not enabled oh jesus i hope you hear me if the knowledge isn't working in it if the not if, if the nervous system ain't, isn't sending down the view and that view is working in this hand, that power uh, is again it is not an operation. That's what he's saying here. It's that he is paralyzed. That's, that's what happens when people get paralyzed. A vertebrae, and that's another part of it as well. It, it, it that's what the nervous system travels down through. Again, if that ver that uh, vertebrae is disconnected and the the knowledge can't pass through it, then what happens? You still got muscles in there, but they can't be used. They can't operate. Well, that's the same way with us as the body of Christ. If we aren't allowing the knowledge of God to work in us, if there's a disconnect that keeps the knowledge of God from working in us, then his power, his grace, his life can't manifest in our lives the way that God wants 
it to manifest. It is done through the knowledge of him. And my point is that that knowledge causes that power and that life to come to pass. And that life we've talked about on a couple of different occasions. Again, it's, it's over here in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22 and 23, where it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. All of these things are that life that is going to be imparted into us mm -hmm. again as that knowledge works in us. It's just like again um, uh, when it said that when a person has the knowledge of sin, that sin produced death right. on the inside of us over in Romans chapter 7. Well again, as a person has the knowledge of God, the Spirit of God produces right. life. And that right. life is again this love, this joy, this peace, this kindness or this long suffering, this goodness, this faithfulness, all of these. And this is the thing I want I want to show. These are, again, desires, feelings, emotions. Hear me again. Love is what to, uh, is to operate unconditionally for a person's good. Ultimately, to operate toward an individual in a way that's for their good, that's not based on anything that they can earn or work for or, or, or purchase for me to operate that way towards them. Well, I have to have that working in me in order for me to do that. Uh -huh. I have to have that unconditional love as a desire that leads me. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Again, even with peace, peace is, again, can keep me calm in whatever situation may come. Again, I have to have that working in me. That's like feeling a desire that the Spirit of God will release in me in the midst of what's going on. Again, right. what's long-suffering, being long-suffering with people or patient with people. Again, uh, uh, that has to be a desire working in me. That is life working in me and that will work in me as I see, as I see people, as I see God, as I see myself the way God sees and have that knowledge working in me. All of these things aren't things I have to try to be. These are things that, these are the fruit of the Spirit. And remember, we said that the Spirit is the one who gives life. These are that life that we just read over here that His divine power has given us all things that pertain to this life, that pertain to all this working on the inside of us. All of this, this love, this joy, again, this, this peace, this long suffering, all of these things, again, God is saying, I want to work on the inside of you. And as they are formed on the inside of me, what are they gonna do? They're gonna affect how I live. Mm -hmm. If you have love working on the inside of you, is that not gonna affect what you do? If you have joy, think about joy, Again, you have joy on the inside. Isn't that going to affect how you live, what you do, how you respond? Again, long-suffering, isn't that going to uh, uh, reflect it? Uh, or isn't that going to affect how you respond to people if you have long-suffering produced on the inside of you? Again, all of these things, are, again, are formed in us as a result of us having his knowledge. Again, just like, again, with this hand. Again, uh, um, man, let me just see if I can say it this way. Um, okay, let's just use an example. Just like if, if, if someone is crying and I want to comfort them, I have comfort in my heart, right? And so what happens with my hand? I start rubbing. Well, that comfort is working in here now, too. That, 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 that love for them is where I hope you, I hope I'm making sense with yeah. that love is what it, and it's working in what it is doing. Why? Because the same understanding here is working in this hand and that hand now is responding as a result of what is working in here. And so it's, a, and so I'm saying it's the same thing with us as his, again, long suffering, his kindness. It's working in us. It's going to be uh, reflected out of us in what we do. 
That's right. And all. And so my point though is that this works in us when we see as He sees. When we allow His knowledge. When we allow how He sees people to again, just like you gave the example. I, get, I gotta keep going back to that. When you see that person, your family member, or whomever it may be, and you get, and you're like, man, I have known the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. I've known how much He loved me. I want that person. Mm -hmm. To know it. What does it do? That love. It motivates you to say something to them. To now respond in a particular way. Well, that's like you as a member of the body. Again, extending out to that person. The same love that's in the head. Through the same love that's in the head. Well, how that got in here is because, again, you, buy, you cling to the head. And how the view of the... The view and understanding of the head then now extended out to you. Oh, man, I hope, I'm, I hope I'm making sense. Go ahead, sir. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's not by chance that the Lord, um, uh, um, through Paul, make, make, made it known the parallel between mm. the husband and the wife. Absolutely. Uh, 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 even a man, man and his wife, because... Mm -hmm. You know, how could you take care of your body if you, you know, you don't even love yourself? My God, yes, that's what exactly happened. right, yeah. So, 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 so let's talk about Christ who is the head and those who have chosen him, mm. those who have yield themselves mm -hmm. or whatnot, become the body. We are a My. body uniqueness My goodness, yes. of the world. My goodness, or yes. Or whatnot, the world may have a head or it might not have it, but the way it's going without... You know, the end of this way, you nothing but the way of death. Yep, yep. But, now, yep. but you know, when we submit ourselves to him, we become his hand extended, yes, his feet extended. Exactly. We become and everything extended as a body exactly. and a seed. Exactly. As a regular body, this hand may be able to pick up five pounds, but being in Christ, My this God. hand able to pick up a thousand pounds. Yes, exactly. It My is, goodness. It is the way how Christ moved the body. We Man. just yield our suffer and uh, wow, help govern us to the way of life. Exactly, and that's the whole thing. That's why it all starts with faith. Yes. That's right. you. That's right. you as a member of the body clinging to the head, yes. trusting in the yes. head, depending on the head. And now, as you by faith cling to the head, the understanding of the head will start to work in you as the revelation and wisdom of Christ starts mm -hmm. to work on the inside of you. That's right. It causes you now to start to see as God sees. That's Go ahead, right. babe. I just keep thinking about Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Oh. <laughs> when when uh, her foot, oh. her foot was um, my, my goodness, and yes. So, you know, I'm thinking about we have all these issues clinging to the head because my, we have all these other views that oh, we have been exposed my, to. My God, yes. And so she had to keep speaking to her foot, my, my, her my. toe. Mm -mm. It's first she started with the toe. Mm -mm -mm. Said she kept saying, move, move, mm -mm -mm -mm. move. And eventually the toe moved. And that's just what I think about with the body of Christ mm -hmm. is that we just keep having that word poured and poured, my and poured goodness, my into goodness. us and then it starts small and then eventually oh, that's, grows. Right. And that's that maturity that that's exactly into. what that is. That's exactly what that is. There has to be that constant pouring and pouring into the heart that develops that knowledge. And that's ongoing. That's never a foot stopping. Again, until we're with the Lord, it says we'll know him as we're known then. But now, as that knowledge starts to work in us, God's power and yes, life, yes. Uh, meaning his desire, his emotions, his feelings, form in us as we begin to see as he sees or have his knowledge. That's right. Again, God's That's power right. and life, his desire, his emotions, his feelings. Again, form in us as we begin to see as he sees. And then number three, we say God's power and life form in us compel us into action that aligns with his will. Just like what? My head has a particular will in comforting that person. What does my hand do? It responds in alignment with the will of the head. Why though? Because it allowed the view and understanding of the head to work in it. 
Right. Now, why did it did it allow the view and the understanding of the head to work in it? Because it clinged to the head, exactly. and and that's exactly. how it works. And so again, it's the same way with us. That's why it said over here in Colossians chapter one, verse nine through ten, it says, "For this reason, this is Paul speaking. We also, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and give." And ask that you may be, look what he says, filled with mm. the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? Why? He said, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Look what he says, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Look at the connection there. Yeah. Paul said, my prayer, yeah. again, is that you as a member of the body of Christ are filled with Again, the understanding of the head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as that happened, you as that member of the body will be fruitful in everything that you called to do. Yeah. Everything yeah. that you're called to do, everything that you're called to move in, you will operate in and you'll be fully pleasing to him. Now I want y'all to think about that, fully pleasing to him. My hand is fully pleasing to me in what way? That it responds right. in exactly. relation to me. Right. If, if it was, again, it where... I was I was having trouble just like you said it. I said again. Yes, mm -hmm. arthritis or or, it, or just par par paralysis mm -hmm. or something. It wouldn't be that it's not pleasing. Like I'm mad at it. It would be it's not pleasing that it can't. It's not responding. Uh -huh. Just like you frustrated if you if this is paralyzed. Let's say you slept on the wrong. Uh, you slept on it uh -huh. and you can't move it now. That's like my goodness. And uh, and so that's what he's saying. He's saying. That you'll be fully pleasing him and being fruitful. Look what? In every good work. The good work again yes. that God has called us to. If we notice here, it is a byproduct of having his knowledge working in us. In all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding, we're going to walk worthy of the Lord. Meaning we're going to operate and respond in relation to how God has called us to. We'll be fully pleasing him. Meaning we'll operate again. And what he's called us to, and we'll be fruitful in everything that he's called us to. Everything again, and then we'll be increasing in the knowledge of God. Look at what it says over here in 2 Thessalonians, again, verse chapter 1, verse 11, where it says, Therefore, we also, excuse me, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Look what he says. And our God will fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. He's saying this is what my prayer is. Again, is that God would do this work, making you worthy of his calling. He's going to fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness in your life. Everything that he wants to do. And he's going to do it uh, again with his power. He's going to do it with his power as you operate by faith, trusting in him. Again, that pan clinging to the head. That's okay. all it is. And then look again. These are a couple more examples. I want to show this one too. It says here, for, and I want y'all to catch this one here now. Because remember what I said love was. Love was a life, part of that life that the spirit gives. Well, look at what he says here. He says, for the love of Christ. Look what he says compels us it says constrains us in the king james version he says but catch this catch the reason why <clears throat> for the love of christ compels us because because what because we judged us mm. that if one died for all then all died now i want you to just pause that before i read the rest of it he says the love of Christ compels us and how we're, what we're doing and how we're operating, how we're acting. He says, because we judged us. When we say because we judged us, what does that sound like? Because we have a particular view. Because we see things a particular way. That's what he means when he says because we judged us. How do we judge? That if one died for all, then all are dead. And what is he saying that? He say that what? Because we see this way that if Jesus died for everybody, then that means all of us are dead. They mean nothing in and of ourselves. It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. Not about what I can deserve. I'm dead. Why? Because he, he had to die 
for all of us. That many, if anything that we could do was it was worth anything, then he wouldn't have had to die for yes, us. Because we will be able to get it for ourselves. But because we know he died for everybody and that no one can do anything, then we don't hold anything of ourselves. And he says, because we see this way, his unconditional love compels us in how we operate and how we act. Do you see how the connection with, again, how I see and what I do. How I see and how I respond. Oh, wait, now, let me add another one. How I see affects what I feel. That's that love. That's that desire, that motivation working in me, which then affects what I do. How I, how I live. How I interact with you. And then he says in verse 15, and he died for all. Look what he says, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That's what Paul says the view is I have, that if he died, I, I, I don't live for myself. Because again, if I live for myself, I'm living for someone who thinks that something that he can provide and he can do in and of himself is worth anything. But no, I live for the one who raised from the dead, the one who died for me, the one who paid for everything for me. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, again, you got to look at the body of Christ. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. believe the Lord don't waste nothing mm -hmm. or what have you. You know, uh, uh, he called you to be a body of Christ. He have use for you. My goodness, yes. Or what have you. You know, he, he not just going to protect you uh, cosmetically to, be, to, to make a hair look. He got everything that he needs to make the hand function. Oh, yes, he does. All he knew is got to get himself. I, I, I mean, he get himself a hand. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's when, hey, uh, someone decided to make that. Yeah, I can use him as a hand. My goodness. I can yeah. use that as a hand. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. all the parts are breaking. Mm -hmm. The veins, mm -hmm. the blood, everything is breaking. Now, I just need somebody to my good, My goodness, yes. As opposed to cosmetic. Oh, Man, my. You got it in this world. You got a lot of Oh, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, you ain't lying, though, bro. And, uh, I mean, but that is that is so true. And uh, and this world is truly artificial. And that's why God is constantly saying, again, I need you to trust in me. Yes. Trust in what it is I provided for you. And then as you continue to learn of who I am, what I've done, what I've provided, you're going to start to see the way I see. That's right. You're going to start to see people differently. You're going to start to see yourself differently. If we really look at, again, how a lot of the views that we had before, again, that God is shaped slowly but surely a lot of our understandings, a lot of how we see, and there's still more. Exactly. But God says, I'm going to do that. And as I do that and, and start to renew your mind and cause you to see differently, I'm going to start then to see, you're going to see my spirit starting to release desire, motivation, drive in a direction. Mm -hmm. It's going to start to work in you where you're going to have these, again, feelings. You're going to feel like stuff that you felt you didn't feel like doing before in relation to God. You're going to start to have desire and exactly. feeling in that direction and how you respond and how you operate. And as you have that, you're gonna see that power, that life, yes. that desire, that motivation working in you and compelling you yes. into action. Yes. To operate, just like again, when you said with your family, again, with friends, with coworkers, again, you're gonna speak in a particular way. You're gonna operate mm -hmm. in, your, in, in your household and how you deal with things. All as I allow, again, going back to this, the truth of who Jesus Christ is to work in my heart. Right. As I allow that, all this is just a domino effect of it. Yeah, that, none of this is something you got to try to do. This hand doesn't have to try yes. to make the power work in it. It doesn't have to do any of that. That's right. All it does, and, and hear me, it doesn't even have to force the 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 nervous system to trigger it. Exactly. All it has That's to right. do is cling That's to the head. That's all it got That's to do. Right. And allow, again, as that connection, as it clings, automatically the connection is open for what? Right. The, the view and understanding to go back into that body member. And that's all we have to do is trust in Christ, look to him. And as we do that, we will see again 
the motivations, the feelings, yes. the desires of the Lord. Just like you gave last week, babe, yes. uh, babe where it says, delight yourself in the Lord. What is that a picture of? This hand delighting itself in the source. Mm -hmm. As it delights itself in the, in the source, the source gives to it the desires to move in what it's called to. It works in it to function and do what it is that it is called to do. And that is the case for us, y'all. That that's the role that feelings play in faith. Feelings don't go, feelings, it's not as if all feelings, again, I have to continue to say this, go against faith. It's not a faith versus feelings thing. Right. No, right. only right. if those feelings are in opposition to faith. But there are certain desires, right. emotions, motivations that will work in you that align perfectly with your faith in Christ. There's nothing wrong with emotions, nothing wrong with feelings. Nothing wrong with desires. It just all goes back to understanding where that feeling, desire, motivation is triggered from. Is it triggered from, again, a view and understanding that has been shaped by the gospel, by the good news of Jesus Christ? Or is it shaped by the thinking of this world? That's all about me, me, me. But I deserve what I'm supposed to have, what I'm supposed to get, what I got to make happen. Is it shaped by that? Because all of that, uh, again, just like I used the example of the young man that did that to his, his girlfriend, mm -hmm. I, I guarantee he had some kind of self-view of, you know, I don't deserve this. I'm supposed yeah. to have this. You're supposed to be this to me. Yeah. And it triggered him to a place to respond yeah. that way. Again, it was rooted in some kind of self. Again, but again, I go back to if a person allows that view and understanding to be shaped by the Lord, then God says, again, I'll work in you my desire and it will lead you toward the good works that I've called you to. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we just bless you. Yes. We honor you and we yes, praise Lord. you. We thank you. We thank you just for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you for just allowing us to be here. Thank you for, oh God, just speaking to our hearts this day. And just continue to speak to our hearts. Just show us your great truth. Renew our minds. Allow us to see the beauty and wonder of what your son has done. Allow that to flood our hearts, oh God, so that we can start have uh, um, the renewing of our mind be more and more and take place more and more. And so we just bless you. Thank you for everyone in this place. Thank you for everyone watching this recording. Just speak to all of our hearts and lead us and guide us in all that you have done. And it. It no better Not promise to any of us. So please turn.